diamond shoppers. Do you feel awkward trying to use a loop and just kind of agree to what the salesperson's saying? Well, today I'm going to demonstrate how to use a jewelry loop, which is a vital tool for examining the clarity characteristics of your diamond. So ready to become a pro? Let's get started. So in professional settings like diamond labs, a 10 power magnification is used for the final clarity grade. But before you start using the loop, ensure your diamond is clean. Dust, dirt, or even natural oils from your fingers can obscure your view, leading you to mistake these for imperfections within the diamond. So how do you use the loop correctly? First, you wanna take your stone and a cloth and you want to just rub it gently, making sure that it is clean. So keep rubbing it. And you wanna use a lint-free cloth. So then you take the diamond. So if it's on the table, you wanna make sure it's tabled down so that you can grab it from the sides. And you want to have the tweezers in your non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, put the tweezers in your left hand. Then you take the loop. I have a brand name called the Zeiss Loop. I really like it because the optics are amazing. So this one doesn't have something that you can put your finger through. So most jewelry stores have one you can put your finger through. But you can hold it. And what you want to do is with your knuckle, put it on your cheekbone. So you wanna keep both eyes open so you're not straining your eyes and causing spots or anything like that. So keep both eyes open, put your knuckle on your cheekbone and the lens in front of your eye. Then with the tweezers, you wanna put that in between your middle finger and your pointer finger. So this should be about an inch away and so you're stabilizing against your cheekbone and you're stabilizing the tweezers in between your fingers. And then you wanna just gently rock and tilt the stone. And why do you wanna rock and tilt the stone? This way, you're not mistaking any reflections of the tweezers as an inclusion. So if something's moving, that means that it's not an inclusion. An inclusion will be in the same spot and won't move from that location. So you wanna look at all sides, maybe you wanna look at the bottom, flip it over. And so if it's not exactly in focus like that, you can either pull it back or push it forward and just rock and tilt it and look at it that way. For an extra pro tip for clarity grading, you want to put the stone down, rotate it 90 degrees, look at it that way, and you, do that four times, so north, south, east, west, and you can get a picture of what the clarity grade really is for the diamond that you want to choose. So if your diamond is mounted and not loose, then you want to put your loop in your dominant hand, so I'm right-handed. Again, put your knuckle on your cheekbone, and then bring that diamond in about an inch away. So it should be about an inch away. And then again, rock and tilt it. You wanna look at all sides. Maybe you wanna look at the girdle, which is that edge around the stone. Maybe you wanna look at the bottom. So you get to see all of the ring. And that's how you'll determine if there's anything inside your diamond that you need to be aware of. Mastering the use of a loop is key to identifying the perfect diamond for your engagement ring. With these steps, you'll be a pro in no time. And remember, I'm here to help if you have any questions. And I have a full video on using the loop like a pro in my free diamond masterclass where you get anytime access to all my Diamond Insider secrets that goes beyond the four C's and shows you exactly what to look for when choosing the perfect diamond for your someone special. If you found this video helpful, 
Don't forget to like, share, and follow for more diamond tips and insights. Until next time, keep shining.